Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Due to its large payload capacity and long range, the United States military deployed the B-52 Stratofortress in the Cold War, Vietnam War, and several other war zones like Iraq and Afghanistan. Developed in the 1950s, this sturdy aircraft can fly up to 9,000 miles while carrying up to 70,000 pounds of weapons, which is quite the reason why the U.S. military has been using the B-52 for more than 65 years and still plans to keep this iconic aircraft flying for several more decades. Over the years, the B-52 has undergone numerous upgrades to overcome the technological shortcomings required for modern warfare. B-52 requires several hours of ground operations before taking off. Although every aircraft goes through pre-flight checks, the B-52 requires thorough analysis on every end due to its old age. Both the ground personnel and aircrew check the bomber's exterior, including the brakes, tires, and engine, and any discrepancy found in the aircraft is reported and repaired instantly. The United States carried out constant bombing campaigns during the Vietnam War using B-52 bombers, and only 31 of these huge birds were shot down. This is because the B-52 is capable of releasing munitions out of its bomb bay as soon as it is airborne. The original design of the B-52 allowed it to carry traditional bombs that could only be dropped from its two bays onto various ground targets. While effective, this design did not allow the aircrew to alter the weapon type mid-air. However, recent upgrades have introduced a new technology named Common Strategic Rotary Launcher, or CSRL. That can not only carry a range of missiles, bombs, and smart munitions, but also allows air crew to quickly change the weapon type at the flick of a switch. CSRL not only offered significant firepower, but also dramatically increase the overall mission flexibility. One of the main advantages of equipping B-52s with rotary launchers is that they can be fully loaded with weapons prior to the installation process. It can take up to 11 hours to load the CSRL with weapons, and once loaded, the crew puts it on a trailer that is later attached to a vehicle that transports it toward the aircraft. The rotary launchers are inspected thoroughly and placed exactly below the bomb bay of the B-52 aircraft. The CSRL is then slowly raised and mounted in the bomb bay, leading to the final step, which is closing the weapons bay carefully. In September 2014, the U.S. Air Force demonstrated its power projection capabilities during a nuclear weapons system evaluation program sortie. An unarmed AGM-86B air-launched cruise missile, or ALCM, was released from a B-52H Stratofortress over the Utah Test and Training Range. This exercise showcased the U.S. Air Force's ability to pull an ALCM from storage, 
loaded aboard an aircraft like the B-52, execute a simulated combat mission, and successfully deliver the weapon to its final target. Today, what we're going to be doing is taking out our uh, one of our AGM-86B cruise missiles. Uh, they're going to be loaded up to the B-52, and they're going to be test flown uh, as part of the weapons system evaluation program. We do this every year, where we basically we're, we're validating that the weapon system is still good, that it's still valuable and, and able to be used uh, whenever whenever need be. In the past, the U.S. Air Force has also launched hypersonic aircraft such as the Boeing X-51 Wave Rider from the B-52 Strato Fortress. The X-51 is an unmanned research scramjet experimental aircraft capable of attaining speeds of Mach 5 or around 3,000 miles per hour. As the name suggests, the Wave Rider remains airborne, utilizing the compression lift produced by its own high-speed shock waves. The X-51 cannot take off from the ground like a traditional aircraft. Instead, it is launched from an airborne B-52 Strato Fortress. A Wave Rider is loaded onto the left wing of a B-52. Unlike conventional weapons loaded into the bomb bay, however, its launching mechanism is quite similar to the traditional weapons. On June 13, 2011, the U.S. Air Force conducted a test flight on X-51 after deploying it from a B-52 Strato Fortress over the Pacific Ocean. The Wave Rider was able to achieve hypersonic flight at speeds just over Mach 5. However, the flight ended early because the Scream jet engine failed to reach full power. After attempting to reactivate the engine several times, the Wave Rider crashed into the Pacific Ocean. In addition to B-52, the U.S. Air Force has several other bombers, like the B-1 Lancer and its long-range bomber force. The B-1 was recently upgraded with an Integrated Battle System, or IBS, which is a combination of three technological upgrades, including a fully integrated data link, a vertical situation display upgrade, or BSDU, and a central integrated system upgrade. The BSDU upgrades the B-51's forward cockpit by replacing the two monochrome displays with four multifunctional color displays, providing more situational awareness data to the pilot and the co-pilot in a user-friendly format. The B-1 Lancer has a large bomb bay that can carry different types of weapons. The Navy Ordnance personnel built inert Mark 62 quick strike mines to load onto the B-1 aircraft. The arming device is installed on the nose section of the mine case, whereas the target detection device, or TDD, is fitted on the rear section. Explosive Ordnance Disposal, or EOD officers, are the experts who overlook the complete mine-building process until it is ready to load onto the B-1 Lancer. The B-1 Lancer has three internal weapon bays and six external hardpoints in its underbelly to load the munitions. The air crew mounts the missile onto a loader that carries it to the B-1 Lancer. After placing it precisely under the bomb bay, the missile is slowly raised and loaded onto the aircraft. The B-1 can carry a total of 75,000 pounds of munitions in the internal weapon bays. 
while the external hardpoints can carry up to 59,000 pounds of weapons. The B-52 was originally designed to carry both nuclear and conventional weapons. Still, after the U.S. signed the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty with Russia, the aircraft was prohibited from carrying nuclear weapons, making it a traditional bomber for life. Every now and then, the U.S. Air Force conducts the Bomber Task Force, or BTF, mission using a B-1 Lancer. These missions are carried out across the globe, dropping different types of bombs to improve combat readiness. Such demonstrations clarify that the U.S. Air Force can employ B-1 anywhere, anytime, in support of its allies, so the adversaries would think twice before pulling a stunt against the U.S. The United States carries out various demonstrations to improve interoperability with its allies. On February 26, 2021, the 416th Flight Test Squadron successfully performed a GBU-39 bomb drop flight test at Edwards Air Force Base, California. This flight was a part of the Republic of Korea F-16 update program. However, this was not the only instance where the U.S. Air Force and ROKAF worked together on this program. On May 21, 2015, similar tests were conducted at Osun Air Base, South Korea, where several F-16 Fighting Falcons dropped GBU-39 bombs for the very first time on Korean soil. Recently, the Naval Surface Warfare Center, or NSWC, has released WISS version 5 upgrades that are playing a vital role in improving aviator training and warfighting readiness at U.S. training ranges. When the pilots take aircraft to the range and deploy bombs on the target, the data is transported back via fiber optic networks back to the base on the ground. The upgraded version of the WISS includes infrared camera systems that record high-quality images and videos. This data helps the pilots to detect bomb impacts on the ground, get relative feedback, and alter their strategy to improve bomb impacts in the future. The U.S. military constantly upgrades the Technology and Air Control Units, or ACUs, to efficient operations. On May 30, 2017, the 726th Air Control Squadron received its first major control reporting center weapons system upgrade in 20 years. The all-new TYQ-23A system replaced the older and bulkier 1980-style operations modules, allowing command and control operators to control a section of airspace and do battle management when called upon. The package also included an inflatable satellite that improved the receiving power, ultimately providing better communication. Long-range bombers like the B-52 and B-1 Lancer can carry a wide range of conventional weapons and are capable of striking targets with greater precision. However, both of these bombers are also part of the U.S. nuclear triad that includes ICBMs, SLBMs, and long-range bombers. One of the main reasons why the United States is planning to continue using these bombers is because they are the backbone of the nation's nuclear deterrence capabilities. That's the end of this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.